at 6'6", which is two meters for any Europeans watching, and 338 pounds, Landon Dickerson is able to, like Jack Black and Kung Fu Panda, flip his hips like a panda, a Kung Fu Panda, and he he gets to the hip, and now he becomes a right guard and pass protection. Do you see it? Yep. Do you see it? Now oh, yeah. just imagine he started at right guard, and he's going to have to just play right guard now. This is the beauty of being an offensive lineman and being the best athlete on the field. Hey, what's up? This is Bo Allen, the Butter King, seven-year NFL vet, Super Bowl champ. Today on Butter Breakdowns, we are going to be talking Landon Dickerson and Jordan Mailata. We've been on a little bit of a, a little bit of an O-line kick lately. You know, my heart resides on the defensive side of the ball. I'm a nose guard. We, you know, there's a lot of crossover, and obviously, I do a lot of scouting of O-linemen, but I am not an expert. So, decided to bring my good buddy Kyle along, longtime offensive lineman, played offensive tackle and offensive guard, to really talk the ins and outs of Jordan Mailata and Landon Dickerson. Uh, before we get into that, the Eagles signed both of these guys to huge contract extensions this offseason, rightfully so, because they're two very fucking good players. Listen, I'm a little biased towards the Eagles, and I love both these guys, so just keep that in mind. Um, let's talk about these deals really quickly. Start with Dickerson. The Eagles made him the highest paid left guard in the game on a four-year deal worth $84 million in max value. $49.4 million in total guaranteed. Obviously, that's $21 million average per year. My guy went and bought himself a zero-turn lawnmower. Go off. Go off, Landon. You deserve it. And then Jordan Mailata, he's got the voice of an angel and the body of an ogre. Uh, this past week, the Eagles extended him on a three-year deal worth $66 million in total value, uh, $22 million average per year. This will put him... You know, fourth in the left tackle market behind Laramie Tunsil, Andrew Thomas, and Trent Williams. Listen, these are two great guys and great players, but you can't talk about the Eagles' offensive line without talking about their O-line coach, Jeff Stoutland, who I personally think is one of the best coaches in the NFL. I know Stout for my time um, in Philly, obviously. You know, when you're a backup nose guard, you run a lot of scout team reps, and I learned a ton about offensive line play from Jeff Stoutland, it kind of really helps you as a young player develop when you understand, you know, how offensive line play works, what kind of techniques they're using. And listen, I just did everything I could to pick Stout's brain uh, as much as I could and learn from him as a young player. And he's a great guy and a really great coach. You know, I want to just mention, obviously, a lot of people know about Jordan Mailata, but he was a seventh round pick in 2018. He was a rugby player in Australia with zero prior football experience. So to to uh, develop from that into, you know, one of the premier left tackles in the NFL is a testament to his work ethic, his athletic ability, but also the way he's been coached under Jeff Stoutland. So I want to give my guy Stout some love because he's an unbelievable coach. All right, without further ado, let's bring Kyle on and let's talk about these awesome players. Butter breakdowns, motherfuckers. good to see you buddy you look really handsome by the way you look fucking delightful Kyle. that's a great color on you thanks man it's springtime sun's out guns out and so are the uh, floral patterns and light shades fuck yeah baby um so before we get started with the tape one thing i gotta show you i'm really hoping you've seen this oh Right yeah, little Dickerson coming right down your throat. Collinsworth, man, it, it's <laughs> like he doesn't mean to do it, but he's definitely meaning to do it. He's got these things in the chamber ready to go. And like with a guy like Dickerson, number 69, you got to just know it's coming from Collinsworth. Fucking unbelievable, man. Unbelievable. Got a little taste <laughs> of Landon Dickerson, number 69, coming down your throat. Coming right down your throat unabated. Uh, yeah, it's exactly right. It's like he, you you know that he kind of like come on it's, it's not like come on <laughs> you, yeah you got to think what would you what would you tell your buddy what jokes would you tell your buddy to make if he was doing the game and you got to think these guys are just like us they play they make jokes like us and they're just old heads so uh good on collinsworth for being a bro and making some dick jokes exactly love to see it kyle i want to ask you a couple questions we've had we've been doing a lot of o-line talk on butter breakdowns lately which you know is fun but i'm in enemy territory 
But uh, you know, I got love for you, man. So I want to ask you, get in the mind of an o- of an O lineman. Glad we could open up with that clip. You know, get ourselves a little loose with Landon Dickerson coming down our throats. But I don't know if you saw the viral clip from when Landon signed his big contract. Uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago, people were like, "What are you gonna do?" He's like, "I'm gonna buy me a mower." He got himself a, a seven zero turn. Long. Zero turn gravelly pro turn 560 Kawasaki, seven feet long, five foot wide, 1487. He knows how to use it, Bo. Like, the only thing I do uh, with a lawn is I have a farm simulator, and you can get (laughs) mods in within the sim to where you can get just a little mower instead of getting a harvester or you know any of that stuff, which is crazy. Like, that whole side of the game, but then you can just get a mower, it's a lot of fun. But he really did. The lines, Get the double the circles. He, I mean, he is a pro. Landon is such a crimson tide football player. Like that's all he wants. Because you know what? He probably got all the money in the world in college before nil, and now <laughs> he's getting even more money. So he's like, "What do you get a man who who has everything? It's just double stripes." You just get him the the ability to give himself a perfect lawn. You know. Uh, but that was my question for you. What, uh, you know, you signed a couple good deals, Kyle. Did you treat yourself to anything like that, like that mower? Yeah, well, the uh, the thing that I have, and I haven't really used it recently, but I need to get back into it. I got a really cool racing simulator, and oh. uh, I really got it after I got injured big time the first time. It was like four years into my career. I got a really bad ankle injury. So I got a racing simulator and I couldn't race on my right foot. So I learned to drive uh left footed only like brake and gas. And it was like, you know, learning experience, but it's cool. It's like a wraparound cockpit style shifter F1 wheel, the whole deal. Um, and now a lot of guys have it, the, the simulators you've seen them, but really cool deal. That was the, the one thing that I kind of splurged on for myself. That was unique. Yeah, I splurged on a little sauna. I got myself an infrared sauna up in my cabin. Kind of nice. I still don't have one of those. See, like I heard that's a game changer. People in what country is it? They just live longer and they're happier. Up in those all, Nordic, those because they all have saunas. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right, baby. Um, all right, I want to ask you a couple O line specific questions. You know, I was in Philly, obviously with your bro- with your brother. Um, spent a lot of time on the scout team, though you know, running the different interior D lineman looks and uh, Jeff Stoutland is a fucking unbelievable coach, man. I have so much respect for him, but like, look at how he developed Landon Dickerson, Jordan Mylotta. Jordan was a seventh round pick in 2018. He was a fucking rugby player in Australia. No prior football experience. I was just kind of wondering if you could speak, speak to that, like how much, you know, how much work he's done, you know, individually and then with Stout to kind of become the player that he is today. Well, I think when I think about Coach Stoutland, and I want to make sure this is right, but uh, Jeff Stoutland was the offensive line coach for the Alabama Crimson Tide when um, when Chance Warmack was a player there. Yep. And Chance Warmack and I came out in the same draft class, and it kind of dates me a bit. And people remember him as a Titan at the end, yeah. uh, I, I believe, or, a, you know, a, he was an Eagle at the end, rather, maybe. Right? Was yeah, he an Eagle I was with, at the end? I was with him in Philly, yeah. So he was an Eagle at the end, Titan at the beginning. He was a high draft pick with the Titans who ended up back with Stout in Philly. But he had such great things to say about Jeff Stoutland and the way that he just – ran his show and if you know offensive lines and you know football buildings you know that there's the rest of the football team and then there's the offensive line and as they go sometimes the rest of the team goes but whatever the team's doing the o-lines they have their blinders on and stoutland from my understanding does a great job of making that not only a fun experience a real experience and he's obviously a tremendous coach. There's so many guys who have come through his ranks um, and put their head down, gone to work every day against great defensive lines. It's not like they're bullying guys in practice every day. And, uh, yeah, they come out the other side, all pros or with the ability to buy zero turn mowers. I just think it's crazy <laughs> uh, how there are coaches like that. And you can strike gold as a player. If you do end up in one of these rooms, I was with Andy heck for only one year in Kansas city. He's the offensive line coach. And he's a guy that could be a coordinator or a head coach if he was anywhere else. And that's how lucky those guys in Kansas city, that offensive line are same 
with Jeff Stoutland. And now he's got social media. I've yep. seen him, whether it's on TikTok or YouTube, I don't know, whatever. But he's, he's in selfie mode somewhere <laughs> saying, hey, it's Stout. Yeah, like have a See great guys Monday. In, and I'm like, in Brazil. See you yeah. <laughs> Bienvenidos, Brazil. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I fucking love Stout. I asked Kelsey. I was up with in Philly with Kelsey a couple weeks ago. And, you know, Kelsey just re- had retired and was basically gassing up Stout, thanked him, you know, profusely at, on multiple occasions during his 45 minute retirement speech. And I got the chance. I was like, Kelsey, what makes Stout so good? And, uh, Kels put it so simply. He's like, he just cares so much about his players. And don't get me wrong. Like there is, you know, obviously so much more to it than that. Like behind the scenes, like all the focus on technique, everything that he does. But at the, at the end of the day, Kyle, like you've had those coaches where, you know, upstairs in the front office, in the meeting rooms and shit like that, they're standing on tables for you. They are fucking, they have your back. They have your best interest in mind. And when, when you get a coach that cares about you like that, you know, like as a player, you're, you'll fucking die for them basically. Yeah. Harry, he stand was a coach like that. And I'm not sure if you know that name, um, but he was the guy who was in Chicago for a long time with Olin Krutz and all the studs back then. And then he went to Notre Dame and he essentially groomed in a good way. Groom has taken on a negative connotation. (laughs) He groomed uh, some young men. uh, And those young men ended up being Zach Martins and Mike McGlinchey's and Quentin Nelson's, um, Ronnie Stanley's. You know, he might have recruited Joe Alt as a freshman and then coached me the next year. And Joe Alt probably, I don't know, I'm assuming Joe Alt, didn't play for he stand, but God, he stand was a legend. And like Kelsey said, he just cares yeah. so much. Like his give a fuck is off the charts. Like you have those teammates that are so committed and you're like, I don't have a doubt in my mind that he'll be here every day with the same attitude. That's how stout is from my understanding. And I know that's how he stand is. Yeah, exactly. All right. So one, one last question before we get to the tape here, you know, people don't want to fucking, look at our ugly mugs, Kyle. They want to watch this football, but uh, obviously Landon uh, Dickerson, number 69, Jordan Mylotta, number 68, two fucking premier players for the Eagles who, ha- who have a really good run game, really good offensive line under stout. But how nice is it, you know, when you have two premier offensive linemen playing on the same side of the ball right next to each other? Because as a defensive lineman, that's a fucking nightmare. You're a three technique lined up on Landon Dickerson and you know, there's like a B block or a power double coming right at you with Dickerson and Mylotta. Like you're in for a long day. How, how nice is that on the other side of the ball? Yeah, it's fabulous. You can really focus in on yourself more and, and not really have those anxieties about where's my guy going to be. But I really think the thing that makes their operation so synergetic and so complimentary is their styles of play and my unique ability athletically to get into tough positions and to get out of bad positions um and when i say get into tough positions i mean this on the backside of a lot of these double teams it's like uh Landon Dickerson's job is throw the crowbar, get the crowbar under the door, right? That's uh, his job against you, Bo, is to wham, sink that same knee, uh, same shoulder under you, inside hand, underneath, create that leverage. And then Mylotta is supposed to fit in somewhere comfortably and create a wave through leverage, balance, and and give a fuck. And Mylotta has a rare combination of being able to get there. He can find those soft spots. He's so athletic inside yeah. and outside. But like you said, with those two in synergy, it's powerful. And it gives Stout the ability to, with conviction, say, we're going to run, r- let's call it ride 34, inside zone to the right yep. out of gun. And Jalen can say, I don't even have to think about keeping it. <laughs> Here you go. Take it. And I know that the O-line will be happy when we do hand it off because Lane's going to get four yards of stretch and he's going to get the guy to the sideline. And we're going to have movement play side with a center guard combination. And then we're going to destroy this three technique on the backside. Yeah, that's a tough matchup for a three technique. Um, real quick, hard to talk about the, the uh, Eagles offensive line without my buddy, your buddy, Philadelphia's buddy, uh, Jason Kelsey, without mentioning him. So what, what do you think the O-line is going to look like with Kelsey retiring? Uh, I feel like they're going to – I mean, they're going to have to dictate what they look like because Jay, with Jason, it's a uh, – this is the way we're going to be doing it. Right. And uh, I, I look forward to seeing who steps up in that role. It leaves a void for guys uh, 
uh, veterans in that room who have never had to wear that hat to be yep. the guy. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see. I agree with you, Kyle. All right, let's take it to the tape. Let's see why the Eagles are paying $43 million on average per year to these two players. A little bit of context. You mentioned your time in Kansas City earlier. Hold some clips here from the birds in Arrowhead. Uh, this is week 11. Philly at KC, a Super Bowl rematch at Arrowhead. Remember, this is the Kelsey Bowl. Fucking Taylor Swift cuts every other. Uh, <laughs> the Kelsey Bowl. <laughs> but uh, both teams are coming off bye weeks. Eagles were 8-1. and one, Chiefs were 7-2. and two. The Eagles ended up beating the eventual Super Bowl champions 21-17. to 17. Just wanted to give you a little bit of cons. Uh, I forgot context. that that's how that went, really. Yeah. First things first, we're going to take a look at what the defense is showing us, and that'll tell us kind of what our plan is. And with Landon, you know it's going to be inside zone and your play side guard, and you're against a three technique who is more often than not uh, a, a nickel package rusher, and he's not known for standing up in the run game, particularly – on these stretch plays. So as a guard, what do you have to do? You have to start to play off by threatening um, a bit. I want to threaten your gap. Like you want to widen this guy a little bit. I know it's inside zone, but you're going to have to gain some ground. So Landon, a fabulous job here. And if I can get this pencil, which I will in a second, I click on my pencil and we draw. So Landon's going to want to dictate. He wants his left feet to end up being right here i'm talking about the defender he wants to move this defender here so how is he going to do that he's going to do that by threatening he's going to do that by threatening him with his first step and he does there exactly what we're talking about you know what i'm saying he gets him you can see turk uh, turk sean wharton that's number 98 turk is forced to box this thing a bit and now he's already out leveraged and yeah. we're getting to the rag doll a little bit early there uh, <laughs> on the film, but he's already out leveraged. He, you can see that Landon's got hat placement outside of Turk and Turk can feel it. And you can see his hip and his legs trying to get out there, but his upper body is already engulfed inside and six, six, 338 pounds of Alabama crimson tide. And the next thing, you know, Turk has to fight back, but Landon and every good guard knows that the three is going to have to fight back outside. So he gives him a little Brazilian jujitsu here and slings him back outside. And now it's just about fighting to finish. This is really how great players uh, or good players become great players. The ability to finish at the top of these plays and Turk being a rusher, he, he finds a way not to get flattened, but look, Landon wins the rep and we'll watch it again here from the top and we're not even at Mr. Malata yet, who is probably doing some, some bad stuff to uh looks like Leo Chanel out there. Okay. So here it goes from the beginning. You see landing gains ground. Just keep your thoughts there. So he's going to threaten the outside. He's going to gain ground and Turk's going to have to fight back outside. And now that thing's wide. And obviously Kelsey, Kelsey's going to beat drew tranquil up the middle. And you get some easy yardage, not a flashy explosive play, but just an example of what these three techniques have to deal with when they play the Eagles. Uh, it wasn't the most, you know, physically dominant play. He didn't brutally slam a guy into the ground, but none of these guys have to do that because they can beat him with technique. That's a Stoutland thing. And then the physical nature being six, six, three, three thirty eight. That's mom, dad, and God. As some <laughs> coaches used to tell me, you could, did you thank mom and dad today? Uh, and the big guy, because that's what Landon Dickerson has. So here you go from the backside. We'll take a look at it, right? This is the same play, I'm assuming. Yes, sir. Same play, number 69. You can take it you now. Uh, we got our guy 13 blocking off. You know, if we could kick him out of the meeting, number 13, we can get him out of this meeting. <clears throat> so it's going to be your first step has to not only gain, uh, gain a little bit of width, but gain ground. And with that, you have to replace the second step. Get that thing in the ground. Keep your base. Because when this second step gets back into the ground, that's when it becomes a big drive. Uh, but in this play, it plays out differently. And we're going to watch it from the backside once. And I'm going to shut up. So here we go. Landon Dickerson on a drive block. Play side. It's nice. And then Kyle, I don't know if uh, 
you know this, but usually when you are a three technique, like here, see, I can draw a tool too, baby. Like number 98 here, and you're away from the back, just swift right here, you know, and whatever this is, shotgun, probably gone far. I can't really tell. I don't know where the tight end is. Anyway, they're sending the three technique away from the back. They're coaching you to like get vertical. You know what I mean? Yes. So they want you to get vertical through this B gap. Now that's hard as hell when you have a guy who is, like you said, 6'6", 340, and he rides a zero turn mower like he was fucking born to do it, like Forrest Gump. It's tough, man, because this is a big boy, and you're trying to get vertical straight through his face as he's drive blocking on it. I mean, it's a really impressive block here. I think the recovery from Landon Dickerson to throw him is just a testament to his upper body strength. Is That's huge. all core strength right there, dude. Yes, and yeah. and some dudes just have it. Um, and I, I think about who, like, the biggest, strongest guys I played against <laughs> were, and I think about, like, Fletcher Cox and stuff. And these dudes just have a naturally gifted, strong core. And to be able to shuck a guy like this, he plants the left foot, he drives that hip, and then that right, it's just like a shot put. It's a shot put yeah. motion. He's able to get like the leverage. Hump, like a hump move. But and then this is part of the battle. Watch Turk. He loses the 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 fight, but he doesn't get dominated at the end. This is all part of football. Uh, and I like 98 a lot. He's a good dude, buddy of mine. And uh, he's a battler, man. He's a tough out in the pass game. And he knows that he's going to be uh, back against the wall in the run game, especially against a guy like Landon. No kidding. And now let's talk about Jordan Mailotti, six foot eight, 300 and what, 65 pounds, a massive guy. There's not a lot of guys. I mean, you're, you might be one of them, not to fucking ride you too hard, but when you stand by him, I feel like a small little boy. I was uh, spent some time with Jordan Mailotti, and he is one of the few. He's a, a fucking great player. Obviously, the emphasis for us here. And a rare athlete. A rare athlete. Um, Obviously, we emphasize Landon Dickerson a lot on this block, but – Talk a little bit about what Jordan Mailata is trained to do on this What is it, inside zone. Okay, so the inside zone, play side tackle in the gun, you're going to want to try to stretch this thing, but you want to gain some ground. You don't want to step in a bucket. You don't want to give them the up and under. That was one thing that I struggled with at tackle early um, because I was a guard, and I was a really good guard because I could get on guys quickly. They were within reach from the, the snap. Um and I remember playing against Dayton Jones in Green Bay, and I I, t I didn't gain enough ground, and he went underneath, and he made a big play on a third down, and I'll never forget it. It was a weak side zone, um, just, you know, you know, technique just like this. So I want to see 68 gain ground with his left foot, um, gain depth. Um, you want me to draw foot. this for you? Yeah, I want to see 68 gain a little bit of depth with his left foot. And then I want to see that right foot explode on less than a less than a forty degree angle, less than a forty five degree angle at this dude's fifty four on his right shoulder. I want to see uh, the same threat that Landon Dickerson put onto ninety eight in the B gap. I want to see that same threat in the C gap here. I want to see fifty four feel like he's going to get reach for half a second. Now, my lotta does it differently. If you're asking me how I'm going to do it, that's how I'm going to do it. My lotta here is so big and strong. He stays inside out. Leo Chanel is not going to be able to run him over. He says, "If you want to come get to this play, you're going to have to run through me." He builds a wall and absolutely runs his feet. A lot of tackles that employ this technique that Jordan Mylotta is doing early in the play. If you go to the beginning here. He, he kind of protects the B-gap a little bit for Landon because of the technique that you're talking about, that jet technique. Yep. Now, I'm not sure if this is coached, and it might be by Stout because they're a great unit in sorting things out really well. But if I'm a selfish tackle and I know that this is my block, I'm shot out of a cannon to get this guy to the sideline. But good, massive humans go inside out like 68 – and usually they shut it down in the effort department, right, Bo? Yeah. But 68, Jordan Mailata, the rugby player who got the ball in his hands and was a skill player in that game, is not okay with just getting on the block and letting a guy win. He wants to dominate. And you can see Leo Chanel fighting for his freaking life here. Look at the difference here in size. It's amazing. It is fun to watch. And I wonder how much of it is just how Jordan Mailata wakes up in the morning and how much of it an impact that Jason Kelsey has had on that room and how much stout has had on that room. So that's one play, two players. I, I, I really like the effort from my lot. And like I said, 
being able to just stay inside out and use your athleticism to wall guys off. It's fun to watch and it looks too right. easy to be honest. Yep. So we saw him on the front side of a, you know, like a mid zone or inside zone. Now we're going to catch them. I believe I'm going to run this clip so you can take a look how, but I think this is a backside B block fast scoop. That's what I would fucking call it. You're the expert. Not this me. is a B block. Let's see. Let's find out. If it is what I think it is, and it's against one of the best <clears> in the world, 95, who is so big and strong. And this just looks elementary for the left side. This is the block that was my favorite. If I was, so if we inverted this picture and the right guard had the three technique and we were running to the left, this, this would be my bread and butter. We call this a B block. And when you get a B block, you know, as a guard, you can shoot your gun, as we say, uh, because so you've these gotta... two dudes are climbing. And when I got drafted, 95 in this picture was Indomitian Sue, and I was Landon Dickerson. And my job was to try to find a way to throw the crowbar in that door and let my tackle come in and <laughs> knock it down. And in this situation, it's just as daunting, if not more, of a task for Landon Dickerson because Chris is stout in the run and the pass um, equally and massive and long. Now, the – the key for a left guard is get your right foot in the ground and get your, it, the key is to get your left foot in the ground as quickly as possible and gain ground with it and keep it under your hip. Now that's a pretty damn good job considering the track of the back. This is mid zone. This is a mid zone alignment and it looks as if the right guard in the center are sorting to drew tranquil, which they are. This is going to be an a block and it looks like old 93 is in there giving him the wraparound business on the right guard here. But you take a look at the left guard and the left tackle, and they're working a B block, and they've got time. It's a mid zone block, but they've got time. But you got to have a sense of urgency because a lot of these times the home run happens when the backside backer gets blocked. Right? It's it's going to be six yards, but the backside backer will get the tackle, and we keep the home run at bay, as the defense would say. But if that fifty four gets blocked by sixty eight and sixty nine, it's going to be out the door. Okay, so if you run it back to the B block, you saw sixty nine. He gets it his left foot in the ground before contact with Chris Jones so that there is a brace when 95 meets with that strike, two-handed strike, hat and hands. And Chris Jones, you can see, he's trying to get his second step in the ground as well because they're both fighting for leverage. And now it's just a freak off. It's like a ditty party here in the B block. It's 69 <laughs> and 95. All the stars are there. And 68 is coming right behind. Um, pause. Uh, actually play in this case. So now you get both the guys fighting for inside hands and you can see the entire time because the sense of urgency that Stout has placed upon these guys that who is fucking Landon Dickerson looking at the whole time old 54 who is screaming like an eagle across uh the top of the the uh, line of scrimmage so let's see how this thing plays out and you can see all the while jordan mylotta is getting depth and he's staying square and he's also watching 54 because when 54 crosses 95 95 then becomes 68 this is so beautiful and there goes landed dickerson so 54 when he reaches the point of no return and the running back knows this the tackle knows this everybody knows this when 54 runs by you let him fly and by that i mean hit him in the hip and you run his ass you take him in the rodeo and that's what landon's going to try to do here you can see him committing to it and there's my lot of committing to flushing and finishing 95 and now it's one-on-one -on -one, and we could be hitting our head on the goalpost. and this is a beautiful football play and it's all because that B block, you know what I'm saying? Look, the A block's great. The A block's great, but it's the freak off on the backside going against number 95, the all pro, the future hall of famer, Chris Jones. Uh, that's how you go to Kansas city, I believe, and handle it. This is the same exact B block freak off. This is from the, uh, the end zone, the offensive end zone. Okay. So watch the right left by 69. So, Watch the right to gain ground. It's mid zone. And then that left gets under. I'd like to see him gain a little bit more with his left to be more explosive, bring the pop to 95. But look, Landon's all about ass and mass. So he can settle into what Chris is delivering to him. He can stay extended and long. And then, like I said, look, if 54 stays backside, great. You continue to, to drive Chris Jones on a 45 degree angle and you just capture that and the back stays front side. But in this case, Chanel screams top side, uh, uh, 69 commits to the old triple extend here. 
this is why you throw medicine balls offensive lineman because right here it's just a med ball toss right here Bo, am I right? Like, if you're sitting yeah. behind and you're oh, trying yeah. to run this guy by, you're going to see how far you can throw a med ball, right? Uh, in that launch position, when the, the strength coach has you on your knees and you do the triple extension launch, that is this drill. You do this, and you get guys out of the club, and you get Swift to hit his head on the fucking goalpost. And this effort here from 68 on the backside to get his hat across and keep it there and fight to get depth and width and keep that left foot under his hip. Every time it's on the ground, he's fighting to get that thing under his hip. This is all taught. This is all technique. This is Jeff Stoutland. And this is great men that they've been able to bring into that room who have taken to that tutelage and done it the right way. Yes, sir. That's a fucking textbook B block, man. All right, let's run through this one really quick. I think this is a one on one. Let's watch it. Yep. Man side, baby. Yeah. So this is, uh, we're talking Landon here against 93. And uh, for guards, this is one of the toughest blocks ever. You've got Jason Kelsey letting you know that 93 is yours, Bucko. Okay. I'm going to go to the right because if you look over there on the right, they got to deal with a fire breathing dragon, number 95, Chris Jones, who just got his ass kicked in the run. So you're going to block 93 by yourself. And Jordan is going to block whoever that is over there. Now for, for the guard, you just want to be able to reset inside out position uh, with your first two steps. You want to do, you want to mirror your hands with your feet. And as I put my right foot down, I'm throwing my right hand. As I put my left foot down, I'm throwing my left hand, but I'm also keeping it prepared to capture just like he does right there. So it's right hand to the V of the neck, left hand capture position, feet in position to recover. If you do somehow by the, you know, by a stroke of bad luck miss with that inside hand, you can beat him with your hips. Uh, and here he goes squaring up and it just shows his ability to sit on it. And now I'm going to look at 68. Who's got a tight split to 69. And it seems almost like Landon is a little bit further back than Jordan. I don't know. It's kind of weird. They're both such big guys. It's hard to tell, but uh, you also have that, uh, 22 character Trent McDuffie down on the line of scrimmage. There's, there's some shit stirring, I believe, uh, outside. And Jordan's got his antennae up. He's looking around trying to figure out what's going on. But let's look at the set. My Lotta. Ooh, that's some athleticism. This is there. vintage Philadelphia Eagle offensive tackle. I can just do things that you can't do <laughs> physically. And we see Lane get out of his stance at an astronomical rate. And this is just, uh, I, I would imagine a byproduct of a left tackle who's incredibly gifted learning from a right tackle who's incredibly gifted. And uh, he's taken some of his tools. Now, what you do after that initial kick is Jordan Wailata. Um, now, here you go. Mirror inside out. Fabulous placement of the left hand. He doesn't duck his head. He stays inside out. He's still square. Young tackles. You don't have to fly open, man. You fly open, it's an easy win. You get, you can go underneath or you can go over the top. But he's square. His hips are square. And on contact, he throws that left hand. It's not even a throw. It's a placement. He's he's fitting it for leverage. He's fit that hand in there for leverage, and now he can sit down. I'd love to see him stay square even longer. But like I said, they're just gifted. These guys in the NFL are so good and so gifted, and Mylotta makes – a lot of those guys look like mere mortals uh, because of his ability to recover. So it's a Pretty great good job on the man side there, Kyle. It ball starts with out. getting off the ball, the line of scrimmage, and it finishes with where your hands end up. And Mylotta, it was a really clean, quiet rep for him. Yeah, here, here it is again from the backside, the offensive back. There's that tight split you're talking about. So I want to see where Landon gets to with his feet because I want to, at the very least, cover this guy up nose to nose with my steps. Because if you cover him up and he goes with the swipe, you know, 93 wasn't very creative here. You probably are going to no. go stutter in, swipe out. You might go out, club in, rip, right? Yep. So um, here's what you're saying. You're saying stutter in, then out, or out, swipe in. And the me. other thing that I'm looking for is what, Butter? Boom! And <laughs> that's what ET I'm doing. <laughs> from this alignment. Yeah, ET. The and that's exit is prime for this alignment we're Agreed. on the man side 2v2 so you're going to watch number 93 try to catch my eyes inside and then 90 is going to ear hole me and 93 
would like to wrap around outside and keep contained. So there's a number of ways you can get home here, but if you're aggressive in covering up these techniques, you should be good. Uh, yeah. So 69, Landon Dickerson does a great job here, and he fights to sit on this bull rush. Very patient, you know. So Just... uh, I had a great O-line coach tell me once, you want to be armless from the back when you, uh, when you are – watched on film in the run and sometimes you can get to points in this pass protection where guys are armless from the back when they're sitting on bull rushes and land in early at some points in this rep his right arm goes missing from film that's a great thing because you know it's in a really good leverage position and it's anchored in there somewhere um and he's got that left hand in there for insurance oh. on the outside Yes, sir. That's a good ref from those guys. All right, let's keep running through this, Kyle. That was some detail that we fucking love to see on Butter Breakdowns, my guy. It's it's electric. I haven't it's, watched film in a while, so this is cool. Let's watch this one. This will be our last rep, Kyle. This is, okay. uh, this is a good pass rush game. I'm going to buzz you through it quick. I love seeing the rush stuff. So here we go. Another ET opportunity on the left side. What was that you just said? Another ET opportunity on the left side. T-E, uh, bro. Now it's a T-E. Okay. And they walked up... Uh, edwards to try to fuck with the eyes um so this is a golden rule um for guards if you want your tackles to pay for your steak dinners when you all go out strike the three technique violently and keep him off your tackle um and tackles if you want guards to look out for you physically in the run game and and be your bully on the field you have to get some depth and you have to stay square because when we do send these three, sometimes it's not optimal. And Jordan Mylotta, now it's not, you know, it's not exactly, he's okay. So if you pause it, I'll draw you a picture of what some of these unrealistic coaches want you to do. Okay. So I'll draw you pre snap what they tell these tackles. So they tell the tackle, keep your, inside leg on this line uh, you just you keep this you drag off if if there's a three technique you know what i'm saying like if this guy was right here because yep. you want to drag off in case this guy crosses face or he tries to get in here blah 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 you just want to be ready and it makes the guard's life a lot easier if the tackle stays on the line of scrimmage but in this case Mylotta, which is a realistic rep, it's good, but it's a realistic version of what these O-line coaches want you to do. Mylotta goes uh, over here at that angle. But what does Mylotta do? And it's something that stood out about his earlier reps. He keeps his hips. He keeps his hips. He keeps Stay his square, hips. square, baby. He's square, he's big, he's patient, he's not lunging. If he lunges here and throws his hands, his hip is prime for the taking for number 51. Because, look, Landon didn't get the optimal strike on 51. 51 went a little Von Miller ghostish there under the strike. <laughs> he crossed face really well, threw that backside arm under, right th uh, through the rip. Is that what he did, 51? Yep. He committed. Yep. Now, uh, Jordan Mylotta is just too big and too square to get home. And Landon Dickerson keeps both guys. You keep both guys inside out. And that and look, when 51's looking inside, what's he looking for? To see if his boy got home, right? Exactly. Because he, 51 knows he's dead in the water. He just jumped into a tank with an orca. He just <laughs> jumped into a he just jumped into SeaWorld with old Shamu and he's dead. But he looks inside and says, Maybe my efforts weren't all for naught. And maybe 90 got home. But at 6'6", which is two meters for any Europeans watching, and 338 pounds, Landon Dickerson is able to, like Jack Black and Kung Fu Panda, flip his hips like a panda, a Kung Fu Panda. And he he gets to the hip. And now he becomes a right guard in pass protection. Do you see it? Yep. Do you see it? Oh, now yeah. just imagine he started at right guard. And he's going to have to just play right guard now. This is the beauty of being an offensive lineman and being the best athlete on the field. You get to do things like this with your buddy. If you're 68, you get to do it with 69 and vice versa. And Stout and Jalen and Kelsey and Jurgens, Jurgens and Lane and all these dudes are so excited to play with one another because they have faith. And watch Kelsey here. This is cool. This is cool. 
Kelsey, boop, 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 boop. Rib cage, okay? This is football. This is what Jeff Statlin's all about. And it ain't perfect, and sometimes it ain't pretty, but shit, boys, we got the job done, and we kept our guy clean, and we stayed inside out, and that is a dish we can work with. And I feel like if there was a Patriot way of doing things right, the Eagle way is commitment to excellence up front. You fucking said it. And that's why these guys are making a lot of money. What a fucking pleasure watching tape with you. You had the fucking one liners ready to go. You had that Diddy line. Just you, <laughs> you had that one ready to go, baby. I'm trying uh, to make good content with you, bro. And this is fun to do. And it's hey. easy. And you have the plays teed up and it's like, Anytime you want to come on Butter Breakdowns, I'll show you a little some D-line perspective. You know, it was an O-line master class from you here. What a fucking treat, man. Um, that was fun, dude. Thanks for having me. Yeah, an absolute blast. So I'll, I'll, you know, we'll we'll stay in touch. We'll get you on more, talk about more O-line play. When but, I'm in Florida, I'm going to have stuff for O-line, so. Let's go, baby. Let's do this. We can watch it together. Um Thanks for coming on Butter Breakdowns, chopping it up, talking about Jordan Mailata and Landon Dickerson, two great players. I wish I was buddies with them because they seem pretty cool on the field. Pretty cool guys. I'm not going to lie to you. Kyle. Thanks, Beauregard. All righty. Thanks again for tuning in to another Butter Breakdowns. It was great having Kyle on. He's a funny motherfucker. Also, you know, we love on Butter Breakdowns getting into the technical aspects of what it's like being on the field, especially from a player's point of view. So it's awesome to hear about all the little technique you know, tidbits and information that Kyle had to offer. It's, it's really fun chopping it up with players that care so much about, you know, technique and just football in general. So like, subscribe, drop a little comment in the comment section about what else you guys want to see on Butter Breakdowns. And uh, appreciate you. See you next time.